Hey, good morning, everybody. Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach. Welcome to our Friday Mastermind. Today, as my facilitator, co-host, and ambassador to Mortgage Coach, we have Kristen Messerly. What's up, Hi, Kristen? Good to have me. Good to have you. So uh, I am just loving modernloanofficer.com. Congratulations on launching that new brand. It's super cool. Thank you. And thanks to everyone in the community that gave feedback and um, has provided support. It's been really, really fun. Good. So, so folks, you know, we've already got a lot of folks on this call and this is a mastermind, you know, it's discussion topic driven. Uh, Kristen and I have an idea on a topic. Some of that came from the community. Some of that came from a, a recent article her and I co-authored together, but this community helped us co-author that. So everybody that shared an idea or provided a perspective, Thank you for being active in this community. I'm gonna go ahead and share my desktop and I'm gonna kick off the call. Um, Kristen, can you confirm you can see my desktop? Yep. I'm gonna just kick off the call with going with what's new this week in the community and then we'll, we'll launch into some topics. So one thing that's new since last time I talked to you guys is I interviewed Tim Brahim on what he calls the setting up the next deal script. And, and it really is one of the most powerful client for life creating scripts there is. Um, there is one edit in it. You know, Tim, when he does the whole, hey, I'm going to help you get the best loan today, and then I'm going to help you get the best loan tomorrow, he uses the word free. I'm going to get you a free loan. And if you read the, the commentary in the chat, um, there are some compliance issues with saying it exactly the way Tim said it. So read the comments in chat. But, you know, it's a great script. There's some great leadership, both in the video and in the comments, that if, if you're not having this type of a conversation with your borrowers, you're completely missing it. So it's a huge opportunity, huge gift to the mortgage coach community. Also, I interviewed David Licken. David Licken is um, one of the nation's top coaches and mentors to CEOs in the C-suite general. And great interview, if you wanna know what your CEO, head of production, and C-suite, how they're planning, what they're talking about. Um, obviously, it's not everything, but it's a pretty good view because he consults with CEOs. I'm also going to be interviewed on his show um, on Monday. I'm going to have a live interview. Uh, part of the topics is, you know, the modern mortgage professional and how do we get there. Check that out. Uh, also, I, I don't know if you guys follow the real estate. Um, it's called the RE Source. I've been a guest on their video show. They do a weekly video show many a times. And they featured this article in LinkedIn called, Hey, Mortgage CEO, Dead Man Walking. You know, it's, it's pretty edgy. But I have to tell you, I, I like the article. Um, while I do think the picture that's painted can paint this picture of hopelessness for a mortgage professional, and I don't believe in that. I believe that if you're a referral-based modern mortgage professional or or lender, CEO of a referral-based modern lender, I think a huge opportunity. I mean, just couldn't be more fired up about the next decade and even two decades. But with that said, there are some real changes that need to be made, some new skills that need to be built, some new technology capabilities that referral-based local lenders need to build. And um, But again, a great post. I just posted it this morning, and I would love to know what you thought of this article. Um, feel free to, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly. Put it in comments. Uh, by the way, Kristen, any commentary you want to provide on anything before I yeah, finish the, the weekend review? Yeah, that article was so uh, so interesting to me. I think everyone on this call needs to, to read it. I um, She talks a lot about how people are, are focused on their business and focused on production in like what's in their face right now but if you don't take a step back and actually analyze and reimagine your business she calls it then you're going to be taken over by the next netflix or the next amazon and um, and i really think you know yeah it does it does sound really hopeless <laughs> so maybe read that in conjunction with dave and i did an article on um, some practical tips to be a modern mortgage prof professional so maybe pair those together but um but i think it's really important to think about how you are um, not just focused on the loans that are coming to you right now, but your business as a whole and how to modernize that experience. Yeah, and we're, and we're going to make that a topic. That was, it, it is a topic in the industry. And 
we want to be here to provide leadership. You know, whether that takes 10 minutes, 30 minutes, takes the entire call. You know, this this whole productivity group is all about how to make more money in less time, how to be more productive personally, and modernizing your practices is a big part of that. So anyways, I think it's required reading. I also um, did a three-minute rant um, that I posted a couple days ago, and it said a few thoughts on the Mortgage Coach Roadmap in 2018. Uh, I don't want to repeat what I said in that three-minute video. I would urge you as a mortgage coach, community leader, watch that video. And what I wanted everybody to get out of that is I think everybody knows us as a great technology platform, and we are, and we will just get better and better and better integrated more and more and more into all of your technology. But equally, we're a community. We're a community of America's best loan officers that are dedicated to advice over price. And 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 we as a company are dedicated to, you know, think of it as technology, community, and training. And we want to train you. We want to help you upgrade what you're doing. And that's one of the reasons why we partner with Kristen is, you know, she is a trainer uh, a thought leader and you know we love her modern loanofficer.com platform and because it's just it's another way for you to upgrade your skills so anyways check out that that video um that's an update and i could go on i mean by the way a lot of great questions were asked in the community uh you know by the way here's another one where ellie may um, had their experience this week joe patur our president was at that event and they released some kind of interesting stats on just how many people are still applying in person and how many people are getting a loan with the combination of online and in-person experience. So that I thought was interesting. Uh, anyways, I could go on and on. Uh, Win by Noon came out with their Q2 book, incredible. So, so I could go on and on, but I think we're gonna kick things off based around, let's see, where is that? I'm gonna go back to it. Then I'm gonna turn off this and we're just gonna go video for a bit, Kristen. But Ryan Owens asked a question, and I'm not going to read it out loud, but I think he's asking two things. One, you know, in an industry where the average age of a loan officer is 50 plus, you know, what opportunity do we have as a loan, loan, young loan officer, kind of the new loan officer? I'm assuming, Ryan, you're new and up and coming. Uh, and then, and then five years from now, you know, what does it even look like to be a loan officer? And so we'll talk about that. And then Brian um, Bugler uh, said, hey, I want to I want to get some feedback on the kinds of conversations that loan officers should be having with realtors. Uh, by the way, uh, Brian, if you're on today's call, uh, let me know in chat if you have watched Jeremy's four CAs, five questions for every realtor meeting. And then I will, um, I'll one, make sure we it can spend five to 10 minutes on this. And I'll also give you some videos to watch. So, you know, great question, Brian. And we'll get to that. Chris, anything else before we just start our topic of the day, which is, you know, what is the modern loan officer? Anything you want to add? Um, I don't think so. I think this is a good, good start. Okay. So we're nine minutes in. We got 50 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to center this conversation around an article that Kristen and I wrote. And and remember, we we didn't just her and I write this. We mastermind. You know, we interviewed top loan officers. We've had this topic on the mortgage coach call. Uh, you know, we did try to organize everything under what we call these four essential disciplines. Um, so Kristen, I'll, I don't know, how do you wanna, how do you wanna start this topic? Do you wanna go through the article? Do you have some thoughts outside the article you wanna share? Yeah. What are I your think, thoughts? I think it'd be helpful just, I think actually this conversation has been framed up really well so far just by going through the Facebook group. But, um, but what I would start by saying, I think it'd be good to give an introduction and then maybe open it up and see what, what others are thinking on this topic. Um, but to start, and I, I think I mentioned this in the article, we are, and this is definitely relevant to Marissa's article on the dead CEO walking that you mentioned, um, but the companies 60 years ago, if you look at Fortune 500 companies 60 years ago, the average lifespan was 75 years. And today that's dropped down to only 15 years. And I think a lot of companies are not um, not looking at the bigger picture and not looking at how technology and um, and this kind of buyer driven market has changed the industry. So where or it changed expectations. Um, I think hey, we're time still- out. Time out, Kristen. Time out. Huh? 
-hmm. you, you you say buyer driven market a lot. Yeah. I want to make sure you again if you're going to get there, and I'm jumping ahead, but let's make sure we tell and teach everybody what does that mean buyer driven market. Yeah, so a buyer driven market is kind of the new standard for um, modern professionals in any in industry. Buyers are taking. Uh, taking control of the purchasing experience and they expect to have control and full transparency um, So it's not it's no longer you come to me and do business the way that I would do it as a loan officer And it's instead the consumer says you come to me or you provide me with the information and resources that I need to make a, a confident informed decision and that's why mortgage coach is a really great tool for being able to facilitate that and um and that's what we're doing with Modern Loan Officer as well. But you have to, and, and when you go through this checklist, I think it sets you up for identifying ways that you can connect with the buyer to um, to have a, a, like support them in their individual decisions. And can I, can I add something to, so I want you guys to think of this, when you think of buyer driven and industries that have gone from kind of like industry driven to buyer driven, I think, I think Uber is just a great example. I mean, Old school was the cab driver had all the all the power. You didn't know where he was. You didn't know when he was coming. And I don't know if anybody's ever been in New York. And he gets to decide if he picks you up or not. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been in New York going, you know, and he's just like, no, not that guy. I'm going to go get this person. You know, so, you know, I mean, you had no power as a consumer. And by the way, he would drive you, he or she would drive you around. He would tell you how much to pay him. And you'd just be like, oh, that sucked. You know, one time it was good, one time it was bad. We had no power, we had no transparency. Uber, we click a button, we actually see who the person is, we see what their rating is, we see when they're coming, they take us someplace. If we thought they took us an inefficient way that cost us extra money, um, we actually complain and they fix it like that. Sometimes they fix it without even asking because they know that the driver didn't take you the most efficient way possible. Buyer driven. That's buyer driven. Um, and then, you know, I want to put this and connect this in a mortgage coach way. You know, loan officer is delivering this fee worksheet. It's the loan officer giving a quote. That is old school. Me giving you information in a way that doesn't have options, doesn't show tax benefits, doesn't show based off of my planning horizons. And then, of course, there's self education, you know. Uh, by the way, Christy, could you confirm you can see my screen on this, by the way? You know, so so that is in our mortgage industry. It's just one example of going from loan officer driven to buyer driven. And, and then again, it's so important that there's this multi-channel way to do business because the family wants to communicate the way they want to communicate. You know, and some families want text, some families want email. More and more families are communicating on Facebook Messenger or, you know, the the um, Apple Cloud Messenger. So so just think of buyer driven is these are examples from a mortgage space. By the way, this is a mastermind. You know, if you can think of other examples that are buyer driven versus kind of old school loan officer industry driven, feel free to share those in um, in Q&A. And I'll even start a question on our Facebook page about this later. Anyways, back to you, Kristen. Yeah, no, I think we see this across industries. Airbnb taking over hotel, the way people approach hotels. Um, of course, we've got Amazon. I think Zillow is changing everything in terms of the uh, putting control back in the or putting control in the hands of the consumer and um, giving more transparency. Even if we can debate on whether or not that's accurate. Um, but so thinking about, and this is what, why we um, put this out to the community of like, what are some ways that you as a modern mortgage professional can connect and, and put the, give more transparency as a, um, to, to buyers today. So we riffed on this definition a little bit, but we came up with a definition uh, on what the modern mortgage professional is. And that is... Uh, the mod modern loan officer communicates and educates through the channels and methods that the consumer prefers. So exactly what Dave was saying, using, uh, it's not just using the phone, it's not just texting or direct messaging. Um, and actually, really interesting, I was talking to the, C well, yeah, the 
director of capital markets for Better Mortgage. Better Mortgage is an up and coming tech tech mortgage company. Um, and they, I think, are going to be a, probably a big disruptor. And they talked about how millennials were actually twice as likely to pick up the phone and call them versus non-millennials. And so it's, and yet, um, there's tons of studies that are showing how millennials want to message and instant message and Facebook message and text you. And so you have to have this combination um, again, because it's a buyer driven market, we want to be able to communicate in the way that we want to be communicated with. And so um, having that mix is really important. So, so, yeah. so real, real, real quick, everybody, I, I put the um, LinkedIn article up on because at least for a few minutes here, we're going to rift, make sure you really consume the content and connect the content. And, and here's a question I have for the community. If, if there is something, you know, when you think of traditional mortgage professional, modern mortgage professional, if there's something that you have changed about the way you operate, and I don't want to just say within the past month, but just think of the most recent evolution that you've taken, I want to know what that is. So please share some examples of how you've evolved recently, your most recent evolution. And then, and then I would also love to know if you've got a plan like, hey, I need to do go from where I'm at today to where I need to go. You know, Chris and I want to know, you know, what have you, what, 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 what have you actually upgraded about yourself? And what is the number one thing that you want to upgrade next? We want to know. We'll write another article on that. So please, in our, um, Chat. go to webinar, in our go to webinar, in questions, share what, what have you upgraded? What do you need to upgrade? Let us know now. I'll throw it back to you, Kristen. Great. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, and one thing, when we talk about this, or when I talk about this, a lot of times I get really negative feedback from the audience. Like, there's a lot of resistance around, uh, oh, you sound like an entitled millennial. And maybe that's true, but I, I think every consumer of all age groups is now expecting this kind of instant communication and constant connectivity and um, ease of access to information. And so uh, I, you know, when we make purchases on Amazon, I purchase almost everything on Amazon that's delivered to my door in a couple days or a couple hours. And I know exactly what's going on in the transaction process. So th these are just the kinds of purchases that we're accustomed to making. When it becomes very difficult to communicate with someone that's make, helping us make the biggest uh, purchasing decision of our lives, then it feels like it doesn't make sense. So just kind of understanding that perspective, I think, it's important, hopefully no one is, um, yeah, I think in this community, people are a lot more open to that. But um, so Dave has pulled up number one in this checklist and we kind of broke it down into different categories. And of course those four disciplines that we identified all of the modern mortgage professionals were really utilizing. And this first one is uh, the use of sales and marketing automation technology. Um, so that means your CRM, um, and I apologize, I'm in downtown LA and it's loud right now. Um, but we've got the CRM, social media tools or content. There's lots of, of stuff out there. Modern Loan Officer, of course, is one solution to that to um, make it more efficient to share on social media and encouraging kind of authentic educational engagement. Um, but there's a lot of other content to utilize in the industry. And then, um, and then also capturing client data and actually looking at what your customers are saying, what what they're what they're interested in, so that you can customize this for for your customers. Um, any thoughts and, on that? Well, yeah. Well, I wish. I actually, now that I'm thinking about, it, I wish I would have pushed a poll question. And by the way, Marcy, if you're listening, I would love to know um, where the audience is. Like, have have you executed on number one, where you're actually? Well, here, Marcy, here's the question. How often do you use your CRM? Never, daily, weekly, monthly. I wanna know where you are at and we'll get that poll question pushed and we'll come back to it in a minute. Um, so let us know where you're at and in terms of executing on this. Cause this really is, you know, typically in our industry, less than 20% of the loan officers use a CRM. It just boggles my mind and, and I, I will, will tell everybody you know who asked me like where are things going you know in five years this is no longer an option 
You know, I mean, you you absolutely, when you're meeting with families, you need to collect that data so that you can customize and personalize and leverage your technology to have a more engaged, automatic relationship. And by the way, if you don't, someone else will, and it's not going to play to your favor. Now, again, is that to say, because, you know, I still believe in the, not still, I always will believe in the power of just human connection. And you've human connected, I'm your loan officer, I've closed a loan, you know, that, that's not going to go away. But, you know, guys, we're seeing it right now with price compression. And Stu Sweet said something that I think is super smart, that, you know, value or loyalty is dead and value is everything. Or he said some version of that. And so people, you know, they're just not going to be loyal to you. You know, maybe they'll, they'll be loyal to you over $500. Maybe they'll be loyal to you over an eighth in rate. But remember, automation is coming. And if you aren't connecting and communicating, uh, other lenders that are that are driving lower prices are going to connect and it's going to cost you business. So this is a super important um, strategy at being a modern loan officer. And we will get a poll question out there and we'll see where the audience is at. Back to you, looks, Kristen. It looks like a lot of people are saying that they're using their CRM all, all the time, which is great. Um, and Mark actually brought up my one of my favorite topics, culture. And uh, he said that he's been working on reaching the Hispanic community and um, how it's important to learn Spanish now. Um, but I think bringing up the topic of language and culture is really important here. Um, and not just talking about the Spanish speaking community, but um, or multilingual community, but uh, people today are speaking the language of authenticity and education. So, I mean, and transparency, like we've been talking about. So make sure the content that you automate in your CRM and on social media is stuff that is communicating in the right language for your consumers. So be aware, be, be aware of that. And, and we're definitely looking at Spanish speaking content as well. Yeah. And for anybody that's on this call, doesn't know it, that total cost analysis is in Spanish. And I, I actually had a call this morning with the number one Latino loan officer in America, Alex, make sure I say his name last name right, Alex Barrera, or how do I pronounce it? It's V-A-R-E-L-A, Kristen? Barrela, E-L-A, I don't know. Yeah, I, so, I'm not so I, in my head. <laughs> well, I, I had a great conversation with Alex this morning and he's using Mortgage Coach. And here's the other part that's important to recognize is that one of the languages that people speak is digital. You know, and Chris and I think you are the one that, you know, said a quote a couple of years ago about that. So remember, it's it's important that, you know, language is it's not just the difference, you know, speaking Spanish, it's speaking digital. If someone's living on their device and you're not speaking their language, you're not delivering your content in a way that's on point and digestible in a multi-channel way. You're not you're not speaking the way people are doing life today. Um, and someone mentioned Google Translation here, and I know this is getting a little off topic, but just be very, very careful of Google Translate because it can translate things in a very incorrect way. Um, our company does do Spanish language and multilingual translation, so if you need help with that, um, you can reach out to me there. But um, just use Google Translate when you're having a casual conversation and you just want to connect. Uh, but definitely don't put it in your marketing materials because I've seen disastrous consequences from that. Um, and then others are asking for suggestions on CRMs. And I think um, Dave and I actually wrote an article on evaluating different um, categories of your technology. And I think that might be a good resource that we can post that in the mortgage coach community as well. Um, oh, you're on mute. Dave, you're on mute. Thanks, Kristen. I uh, did want to give a footnote on that. I mean, the best CRM is the one that you use. And, you know, we integrate with a lot of CRMs. And, you know, th there's a lot of great ones. And I'm not, you know, on call going to say, hey, there's one CRM that everybody should be using. But it's the one that you use. And in many cases, I find people that they have a CRM. And it's not the problem of the technology. It's the problem of the user. So make sure you you really upgrade on what you're doing and how you're doing it. And there are a lot of threads on this topic in our Facebook group. So be sure to check that out and also go to our webpage so that you know the ones that we integrate with. You know, if you go to our webpage and look at our partners page, you can see all the integrations that we have with different CRMs. And I, I recommend that you don't use a CRM that doesn't integrate with Mortgage Coach because we're the ones that are helping you translate um, 
you know, mortgage advice, go from price to advice. And having us integrated into your CRM, I do think is a, is an important thing. Keep going, Chris. So the second category of our second discipline that we walk through is access through multiple communication channels. So we, again, want to make it very easy for them to find you. You're not just available in person or on the telephone. You're available via email, text, and Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger has actually picked up a lot of momentum, um, and I think it's going to continue in that direction for both consumers and referral partners to reach out to you there. Um, now, over text and, and direct messaging, that doesn't mean that you you transact everything through through that platform. It's just a channel for short communication and a channel for other to bridge to other forms of communication. So your messaging, you schedule a meeting, you message and say, "Are you free for a call right now?" Um, but and email is certainly not dead, but utilize email in in its right place. Like text something over if you if it's a short question or tell them that you sent a long email. A lot of consumers today are just bombarded with so much email um, that they're not made available. Um, but and then the last thing I would mention here is using video, which I think takes us into number three a little bit. But um, but there was a I think it was Jeremy's interview that Dave did, Jeremy Forcier, that uh, talked about using video or maybe it was a, a different one. But um, but how a lot of people when you just send over a short video saying hey, I wanted to respond to your question with X, Y, and Z, or hey, I wanted to introduce you to this process. And, and of course, using Mortgage Coach uh, with their the ability to do a video in there, it creates an authentic connection. And again, we're not trying to say technology should remove the personal connection. It should be the opposite. Technology should always enhance the, the personal connection and personal relationship. And, and that's what's going to make you competitive for as long as, as possible. Um, but yeah, moving oh, into couple, yeah, couple couple footnotes, um, and it, it, there is a top producer hit here. But I I interviewed top realtor Jeff Cohn, not this Tuesday, but last Tuesday, and this guy's the 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 number two realtor in, in all of Brookshire and Hathaway, number one team in the state of Nebraska, killing it. And their best practice is every buyer lead that they get. They're calling, they're emailing, they're texting, and they're Facebook messaging. So, so you are seeing Facebook Messenger as a as a reach out tool and as a connection tool. And remember, it's it's multi channel. You know, if you say, "Oh, I called the guy, he didn't return my call," you have in today's world, you haven't really connected. If you say, "Oh, I sent an email and I called," you know, you're fifty percent of the way there. You know, reach outs and communication should be multi-channel. And and I think it's at least three channels, call, email, text, call, email, text, Facebook Messenger. And I, I do think, you know, using all four of those, you really tried to get that person into a conversation. You did everything possible, couple multi-channel reach outs, and they're gone, you know. So I wanted to throw that out there. And then I also wanted to speak to video with a mortgage coach. Because I do think what we've done is a trend that you'll see. So we're we're a platform, you know, and and I think one of the most valuable things that we do it's not just loan comparison. It's not the fact that we are helping you pick one loan versus another. I mean that's valuable. That's it starts there. But it's a you know think about it. every family that buys a home, it's a story, and sometimes that story is like a you know one month story, and they come meet with you, and they're in escrow within a month or a week. And by the way, sometimes that story is a six month or a one year story. It's a long story. Sometimes it has one chapter. They call you up, homes in escrow, I need a loan, let's go. You know, it's a quick story, it's got one chapter. Sometimes it's a six month story with eight chapters. You know, there's lots of chapters to it. And so what makes a platform like Mortgage Coach valuable is it helps you with that story. It helps you document chapter one, homes not in escrow. Chapter two, it's between two houses and we want to see the options over time. Chapter three, do we pay MI or not pay MI? Do we do FHA or conventional? You know, and then, and then by the way, remember the chapter keeps going. You know, you close the loan and now you want to provide an annual review or the family wants to think about um, taking cash out for home improvements. You know, so, so you've got to think of the world in a way 
in which there's stories that you're there to serve, there's chapters over time, and, and you need to be able to update things in a real time world, you need to be able to stream video, you need to get alerts when people do things. So think of Mortgage Coach as a platform to help you, you know, drive this client for life story that's got a lot of different chapters. It's not just comparisons. It's not just, oh, the rate shopping me and I need to pull out Mortgage Coach and, you know, give them a chapter of story. No, you need to, the best loan officers, every family gets their best offer so that they can tell that story efficiently and effectively over time. Does that make sense? Anything you want to add to that, Kristen? No, I think that bridges really well into number four of our checklist, the value-driven services. And I I think just, I mean, a lot of that are, are things that you you just talked about and being part of Mortgage Coach. So really utilizing that, personalizing the experience and finding ways that you can continue to add value through technology and through the way that, again, the buyer or the referral partner wants to be communicated with and, um, and the kind of value that they want to receive. So that's what's going to, I think, make you competitive long-term uh, buyers and, and referral partners are looking for those who are going to be able to deliver more value than what they can Google. And so um, that's how I think you stay competitive. So a couple things. So folks, if Kristen and I missed a discipline, like when you think of the modern loan officer, you're like, yeah, this, I like these four, but there's a fifth or maybe even a sixth. Let us know what it is, you know, share it in chat right now if you think that there's kind of another category that we missed and then also when we talked about these value-added services is there accidentally click that button is there is there a service that we missed you know and or or if you're on this call and you have a question about one of these you know value-added services let us know what they are so you know we want to we want to our goal is to be facilitators of this community help everybody collaborate, help organize it in a way that's actionable and useful. Um, the, the vision Chris and I had when we wrote this article is like literally it's a checklist. And um, Kristen, I know you created some type of a deliverable. If you could describe yeah. what you put together as just kind of an amendment to this article. Yeah, so I uh, created a five page PDF that includes some of the elements. Could you, of the could you, yeah, could you yeah. pull it up on your desktop? Me, yep. And, and by the way, folks, Kristen, you know, I, I'm not putting her on the spot. She already offered to make it available to you folks. So it will be an addendum in our Facebook group. If you're watching the recording of this interview, you need to go to Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. It's a private group. We let loan officers in. Uh, but anyways, walk us through what you created here, Kristen. Yeah, so this is kind of just a follow up to make it a little bit easier to evaluate your disciplines. And so we've got uh, walking through our article here. Um, and then I would encourage you to walk through this and make notes throughout it as well. I debated whether to put space here for that, but just um, note what you want to prioritize and what your next step would be. Um, and then we also put together a social media checklist as well. So these are based on best practices. Maybe some of this you are not going to utilize. I mean, I don't recommend that everyone use Twitter or tweet daily. I don't do that. I don't think it's, I think it's helpful for some people that have a good community there. Um, but, you know, utilize what you think is going to be useful. And these are based on best practices for um, being most effective and productive on social media. And then, uh, and then make incremental changes. So this is where you want to note what what changes would you like to make over the next year. Um, so thinking longer term. And then what is your next step right now? Like what's one thing that you can do? Whether that's maybe start posting regularly on social media. Maybe it's start doing um, you know the I don't I don't know what your your next step would be, but you are utilizing your CRM. Um, note that here, and then you can update this. I would encourage you to update it once a month so you can incrementally make those changes. I know a lot of people, when we talk about the subject, get really overwhelmed um, by the topic of uh, modernizing your practices. And I think it can be helped a lot by just really slowing down and taking each step at a time. So I'm happy to make this available to everyone. And um, and would love your feedback again on what you find to be most challenging so that Dave and I can continue to provide resources and leadership on these topics to make some of this a little bit easier.
Love that, Kristen. Thank you. I'm going to grab the screen back, uh, confirm that you can see it. Uh, so, so again, thank you, Kristen, for creating that. I think it's a huge service to our community and please collaborate. You know, she's going to post this in our Facebook group. And if you have a suggestion or a question, feel free to ask it there. A few other things I wanted to cover um, before we kind of wrap it up and then just go Q and A for the rest of the call. I wanted to, um, Chris and I, you know, we, we both recognize that, you know, it's possible to be a modern loan, loan officer and not be successful. Like, hey, you could, you know, use your CRM, deliver a mortgage coach and be in sex, unsuccessful. I mean, that, it's possible. It's not a magic bullet. It's not like, hey, if you use your CRM, you use mortgage coach, you use tech, that you're going to kill it. No, that's not the case. I mean, you, if you listen to my interview with Josh Metal last week and he went through his, you know, the five disciplines of freedom, uh, you know, he talks about how important his morning is because how much it centers him, uh, how much he um, is able to be present for people, how much it gives him energy, you know? So, I mean, if you don't have energy, if you aren't present when you're connecting with people, I mean, you're not going to be as successful as you can. So that's not technology. That's you. And then, and then he talks about his discipline number two, which is first thing he does when he gets into the office is he has two hours of un, uninterrupted prospecting time. So if, if you're not actively outreaching, scheduling meetings with new people, having conversations, doing a minimum of two hours for all you new loan officers that are, you know, in your first 18 months of the business, double it four hours a day of prospecting. So you're not going to kill it. You know, if you, you know, and, and most of the time when I interview top producers and then I interview people that are struggling, more times than not, it's just like who is prospecting the most, the most consistently wins. And then how they're using their CRM, how they're using Mortgage Coach, how they're showing up with the level of presence and excellence matters. You know, and then, and then when I think of the loan officers that, you know, kind of do 100 loans a year or between six and 10 loans a month, but they have a glass ceiling and they can't get out of it. You know, they're present, they're using technology, and usually it's just leadership. It's like team building, you know, to become that, you know, loan officer that's killing it month after month, year after year, doing 200 loans a year or more, you know, they're doing all the disciplines of being a loan officer. They are modern professionals and they have great leadership skills. You know, they know how to build teams, run teams, manage teams and so on. So I, I want to show a couple things for you to look at. So we have what we call clear results and, and the results that you should be striving for as a modern mortgage professional are to recapture 10% of your past customers annually. So what that means is if you have a hundred past customers, uh, that's 10 loans annually, you know, and, and if you have a thousand past customers, that's a hundred loans annually from your past customer database. That is, I, I believe that's one of the most, I think it's the most important metric for the modern mortgage professional, because I think our industry is so transactional that if you, um, if you want to just be a transactional player, I think you're going to get beat in that you're going to get worn out you know every year you have to just jump on the wheel and run and you're only as good as your last realtor or your last referral but if you become a mortgage professional and a mortgage practice where your past customer recapture rate is your number one metric that means not only do you need to deliver great service that means you need to continually stay in touch with these relationships and not only are you going to get the 10 percent of those recapture loans you're gonna get referrals to get back to your partners. And I think that is gonna be a difference maker in 2020 and beyond. And it's really the new most important metric. So I wanted, to, Chris and I put that in there. I want to give you a little color behind that. Um, you know, in terms of your capture rate at open houses, and someone asked questions about that, we'll talk about it. I, I do think open houses are so important because if you're closing less, less than 50 loans a year, there's just no excuse. I mean, you you can get business from open houses. And the Nicole Solari interview really made the case that, you know, hey, she got parachuted into Napa. She had no sphere of influence. She wasn't well known. She didn't go to high school there. 
Um, but through open houses, you know, she closed 200, almost 200 transactions last year in four years. And so I just think that's a metric that I wanted to put in there. I, I do think everybody needs, I didn't, we didn't put a metric as to what your conversion should be just because conversion varies based off of lead source, mortgage practice model. Uh, you know, so I didn't want to say, Hey, everybody needs to have a 70% conversion because, you know, there's lead sources where, you know, 5% is the top of the mountain. You know, there's lead source where 20% is the top of the mountain, but, but you, you need to have an exceptional conversion, but we put in metrics that we thought really defined this modern mortgage professional. So if you, by the way, if we missed anything, let us know. And Chris, anything you want to add on that before we kind of wrap up the review of the article and we just go pure Q and A? I don't think so. Um, we had some questions on where they could get the guide, and I just posted it in our and the Facebook group. So, um, okay. yeah. Other than other than that, I think that wraps up the article really well. Okay, I, I do want to make sure because I'm I'm a huge um, ambassador of you and Modern Loan Officer, and down here at the bottom, you you gave kind of a, you know how people can connect with you and a little bit about it. But if you wouldn't mind, just give it another minute or two of you know, what is Modern Loan Officer? Why should the mortgage coach community, whether you're a leader of loan officers or whether you're a loan officer yourself, why why should we, you know, tune in and why should they sign up for your program? Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share that. And again, thanks to the community for um, for being supportive of this. I We are always trying to add value to this industry. And I think we do that really well through content and helping loan officers be more efficient on social media. So uh, I'm going to walk through a couple slides here that um, kind of talk about what Modern Loan Officer is. Um, basically, we provide modern content that's compliant and educational, transparent, makes that connection with the consumer like we've been talking about. We also make it very easy to share that content. So we have a dashboard that looks this is kind of like a stream of content where you can share with one click to social media pages, or as you see here on the right, we put together um, 28 posts per month at least that you can share with one click from your email to your social media pages. So just making it very easy. And then we also provide a lot of coaching that adds value both to your referral partners and into yourself. So you get a tip that you can share directly with on social media or with your referral partners. And there's lots of courses that walk through and webinars that walk through exactly how to be more productive on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on, um, on these social media platforms. So <clears throat> that's a broad overview. Uh, we do customize everything for companies as well, um, but individuals can sign up for just basic like getting the emails and getting access to our dashboard, or they can sign up for customized content that or um, specific content that you can download like videos and graphics. Um, that are specific to um, promoting education in the, in the industry. So I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, I am an ambassador for Kristen. She's an ambassador for us. Uh, I recommend you as a mortgage coach, check this out. If someone wanted to sign up or check it out, where, where would they go? I mean, obviously modernloanofficer.com, but any other, you want them just to email you? You want them yeah, to click yeah, on anything? Okay. What do you want them to do? pretty easy with the name modernloanofficer.com is where you go and then uh, if you have questions about the content or about customizing something for your company uh, or just any questions in general you can always email me or message me on Facebook cool and and can, by the way can people sign up online can they go yeah. to your website and sign up yeah individuals, there there's a sign up button and um, let me see if I can pull it up but yeah if you just uh, go here, you'll be able to click on sign up and there will be options for you um, to choose from. So one is just the basic, get those articles from industry leaders. And then uh, one is where you, you're actually getting videos and infographics that add a lot more value to, to your customers on a weekly basis. Cool. So I want to you know keep this conversation going in our community. If you are a mortgage coach and you sign up, let us know. We want to develop some success stories with mortgage coach loan officers that are crushing it with Kristen's program. And anybody that helps a loan officer go from, you know, wherever they're at today to upgrade, to prepare for the future, to be that 2020 loan officer, I'm a fan. So check it out, sign up, get started. 
So let's just go pure Q&A for the last 15 minutes. By the way, if anybody wants to be unmuted and, um, you know, either ask a question or share an idea, raise your hand and go to webinar and I will unmute you. Uh, and by the way, I might even unmute someone if you don't, because it's just always good to have another voice on the call. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just pick on Amy. Amy Simmons, what's up, Amy? You've been unmuted. Oh, well, Amy doesn't have her mic set up, so I'm going to remute her. Uh, Amy, if you do come back, raise your hand. Sound good, Amy? All right. Let's see if there's anybody. Let's. Oh, Amy just raised her hand. Amy, I've unmuted you again. Let's try it again. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can. Hello. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you. I. Uh, any takeaways that you had from today's call so far? Like if there was one thing that Kristen said that you thought like, that makes sense, or I'm going to take some action on that. Anything come yeah. to mind? Yeah, I love that um, you're addressing the social media part of it and just the way that we're communicating with our clients is totally different than it was even just a few years ago. And I'm finding that I'll call and leave a voicemail, I'll leave a detailed email, but it's not until I send a text or send a messenger back that says, hey, I left you a voicemail, hey, I left you an email, that I actually get some kind of response back from them. And most of my clients now are communicating via text. So I'm finding that I, my next steps, I think, are going to be a, the more detailed marketing towards um, the social media aspects because I'm finding that's a huge channel in my market, which I'm working with a lot of millennials right now. So it's great. Yeah, no, no doubt. By the by, the way, this Tuesday, Kristen is going to join me as the co-host. And we're going to have Rick Shear, $100 million producer in Boston, Andy Tuttle, top producer and branch manager in Dallas. And they both are investing a lot of money and time and being what we call the digital mayor of, you know, they're creating their own city, you know, um, it's, you know, it's geo based, but, you know, it's Facebook. They both have a, have a TV show strategy in their local markets. And we're just going to talk about, you know, that whole, how do I become the digital mayor of my own farm or, or a digital city that I've created that, you know, it might be geo-based, but it could also be based off of preferences that you can get from Facebook. Um, by the way, what are you doing with Facebook? I'm just curious, Amy. Uh, you know, right now it's really just posting every once in a while, it's posting about my closings oh. or posting about our Red Friday and really just kind of keeping a real um, under not undercover, but kind of an undercover position with people. I don't want to oversell myself on Facebook because I do it a lot through my personal page, but I've recently learned a lot more about doing more through my business page and, and I will be starting to do ads and trying to reach out to um, some of our local market that way. Love that. Any, any questions you have for Kristen, you know, before we uh, go on to someone else or take another topic? No, I just love all that you're doing, Kristen. I appreciate your open hand of uh, helping all of us, and I so, so appreciate your insights. And when I saw you speak for the first time at Fairway um, a couple of years ago, you just blew me away, and you really kind of inspired me to not be afraid of the millennial market, not be afraid of the different markets that are a little bit different than maybe my current local community, and so I so appreciate all that you do. Well, thank you so much, and you all have been so great to me as a community, um, really bringing me in, so I appreciate that. And I, I think that um, some of the things that you talked about related to just, you you have to take steps out to, to be, I don't know, sometimes it, it feels overwhelming, and I think just breaking it down, and that's what we're trying to do here, is break things down to simplify those steps. And, and don't be afraid of, you know, for everyone on the community, don't be afraid to, um, to take some of those risks a little bit. I don't mean from a compliance perspective, but I mean from you know testing things out on Facebook and trying out Facebook ads. Um, I, Ryan Owens actually had posted something in the group about a question and he, um, he, I remember a few years ago when Pokemon Go came out and he used Pokemon Go to drive a bunch of open houses um, and drive more value for his referral partners. and. 
it was fun and and really successful for him for a period of time. Um, so you know, just don't be too afraid of, like you said, of the millennial market or the digital marketplace. But thanks. Hey, th thank you, Amy. Feel free to come back anytime. Uh, all right, so Joe Detmer, I'm gonna pull you up in just a minute. I did wanna show one more thing on my screen before I pull you in, Joe. Uh, and I, I just wanna, I wanna drive this as just a requirement for everybody on today's call. Uh, right now you're seeing this article that I wrote and it was an article that I wrote from an interview that I had with Josh Metal. Again, this guy, you know, what makes this story so special is, you know, Josh and his team are one of the, America's most successful teams, but they're they're actually 2 xing their success over last year. So they're doing twice as many loans this quarter this year than they did last year, which is not the norm. I mean, most people are either flat, down a little bit, up a little bit. I don't know too many people, especially, you know, people that were already really top of their field 2 xing it. And he went through his, his, his um, five, uh, disciplines, you know, and I already went through it, wakes up early, prospects, uses the total cost analysis. Anyways, I don't want to go through it in detail, but I just want to remind people as we get in the last 10 minutes of this call, you know, using tech to connect, it's more important than ever, but doing the disciplines that around tech are just as important as ever. And, you know, that article, hey, CEO, dead man walking, it's, you know, there's, I think you sent me, God, not a lot of hope in that. Um, you know, by the way, if you're doing these disciplines, if you're using tech, mortgage industry is going to be killing it. You know, I, I interviewed David Lakin, you know, who's consulting to a lot of the top CEOs. And I literally think some of the, the most fun and most success as a referral based local loan officer is left to be had, left to be had. If you, if you create the right habits, you know, it's kind of like, you get to choose your habits and then your habits choose your life. And if you, this is a really important pivotal time in our industry where if you don't choose the right habits, it is going to, you know, you're, you're making a choice that you're not going to have the business, not going to be as fun for you in the, in the years to come. And the difference between the folks that have those right habits and the people that don't, it's going to become more and more profound and more and more obvious. So uh, with that said, I am going to unmute Joe Detmer. Joe, what is up, my brother? It's been a long hey, time. How, how are you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. Good to awesome. see you, man. Hey, I wanted well, to I say, see you, but I hear you. <laughs> and by the way, your your interview with Josh Metal was outstanding. That article was amazing. So we appreciate it. The other thing I just I had to say, it, it's like I, I so appreciated one of the first comments in in the buyer driven market and when i heard that i had a conversation with a realtor partner yesterday and we were talking exactly about that and we're like going okay so we need to get together and kind of talk about how we're going to go about this a little differently with these types of buyers and i immediately called them when i heard you guys say that no longer do clients come to loan officers and realtors and say I want to buy a home and I'll follow your lead and follow your path and do the things you want me to do versus what we're finding is, hey, I have my own ideas and I'm looking for a prof professional to assist me in this endeavor. And I heard that from you guys and I immediately called this realtor partner of mine. I said, you got to get on this webinar. So he's on here somewhere. But it was just that was just a an aha moment for me, Dave. And I really appreciated that one. You know, I think uh, it's a good hop, hop for all of us. And it's it's always evolving because we are we're in this world now where, you know, what's the number two search engine in America? You know, it's it's YouTube. Yeah. And and so, you know, we're in this market where we can self-educate about anything and everything. I mean, my kids teach themselves everything. You know, they don't even like, oh, let me show you how to do that. I'll get to you, dad, after I have YouTubed it. <laughs> I've decided you know, they have their own little way of deciding who they want to learn from on YouTube. They learn it. And they're like, okay, dad, now what's your story? You know? And so, uh, it's, it's just, you know, and by the way, that's why we invest so much in our YouTube channel because we, we believe that we're in a really unique position that we can reshape our industry, you know, from the inside out. And by the way, from the outside in, 
So uh, I, I love that you noticed that and I love that you got your realtor in it. Whoever that realtor is, you've got yourself one heck of a great loan officer with Joe Detmer. Uh, hey, hey, Joe, anything else you want to ask or say uh, before we wrap up? No, Dave, I really appreciate that. And it's just, you know, as a perpetual learner in the mortgage industry, as you know, I am and always looking to grow in this business. It's just we have for so long tried to display our expertise and and that that this is how the most successful buyers do this but that's all changing now and it's like these guys are coming to us with their own ideas and if we simply just combat those ideas and stop them right there and say no we know how to do it here's how the most successful buyers i work with get it done you're going to turn them off right there and they're going to go look for somebody else so yeah no doubt a, yep well, hey, thanks yeah. for being active in our community. Krista, did you want to say something? Uh, I just wanted to say that, yeah, a lot of times loan officers or professionals will shut down consumers saying, don't look online, don't, don't do your research. And instead it should be, let me come alongside you and let's talk through what you've learned. And, let's, and you're becoming, you're the guide through that process. So I like that approach a lot. Yeah, no, no doubt. And by the way, that makes another really good point. Well, you know, my kids generation and just the new society, we get a lot online. We don't believe everything online. And so there's this, you know, okay, I got to weed through the BS, the misinformation, the sensationalism, the exaggerations, the complete snake oil salespeople. And so, you know, we, we want to leverage the online experience, but we, you know, we really respect the, the local expert. So, uh, so I have put back on the screen, and Joe, I'm going to go ahead and put you back on mute. Um, if you have anything else, raise your hand. Um, by the way, Luke, just raise your hand. Luke, before I go into my wrap-up mode, do you have a question or a comment? Yeah, I love this stuff. <laughs> and, um, you know, one, one important thing I, I think just to piggyback on is I tell my guys here, I say, look, we, we can't put people in a box, right? We, we can't make the consumer – do what we want to do. We have to cater to the consumer. And I just landed a really big uh, realtor in my market, um, basically because one, we have the, we're leveraging technology. And as soon as I said, yes, I do virtual meetings like webinars with clients where they don't have to come to my office, but we can do it remotely. That was it. That cinched the deal right there. He loved it. Love that, buddy. Hey, thanks for sharing. Any questions for me or Kristen or anything else you want to share? No, love it. Keep it up. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for being an active member of the community, Luke. Uh, so, so right now I've got our mastermind screen front and center. Uh, this community is only as good as the people that participate. So if you are not asking questions, if you are not providing comments, if you're not at least liking things, by the way, things that you like, um, you know, you're not collaborating. So please, you know, engage in the community, ask questions, provide comments. Uh, we'd love to hear your take. Uh, so keep it here. Krista, we are in the last two minutes of this conversation. Uh, any Anything you want to share just from a, you know, whether it's a modern loan officer perspective or any last words of wisdom for everybody? I don't, I don't think so. I think keep posting in this group different steps that you're taking. So after you go through that guide that I put out there, and again, I posted that in the Facebook group, um, and you've identified your next step, share that with us and share us your success stories, your challenges, and we can all be um, kind of inspiring and, and motivating of each other. So thank you very right much. For yeah, hey, thanks. Thanks for being here. And want to remind folks, whether you're watching the recording or you're, you know, you're here live, if you have not subscribed to the Mortgage Coach YouTube page, subscribe so that you get alerted when videos get popped up. And and I, I I do believe, not because it's me, but because we have the best community in the industry, the people that I'm interviewing are, are folks that you should be self-educating. If you're not watching one Mortgage Coach video a week, I think you're missing out on a, an amazing educational opportunity. Uh, so check that out. And with that said, I am closing it out with a poll. Uh, if you got lots of value from today's call, we exceeded your expectations and value and conversation, let us know. If we, you know, missed your expectations, let us know. You can always email me at dave at mortgagecoach.com. If there's someone you'd like me to interview, uh, let me know. And if you're a guest and you want to get a demo on Mortgage Coach, click the last option. 
But let us know what you thought of today's call. So uh, remember, everybody, this coming Tuesday, I'll be interviewing two of America's Best. Kristen will be joining me. And we'll be uh, talking about and teaching you how you can become the digital mayor of the marketplace that you serve and the, the digital mayor of whatever you want to be the digital mayor of. Take care, everybody. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you.